Good evening, everyone. And welcome to worship. I'm so happy to see everyone here as we gather together to worship the Lord. As um, I begin our, our announcements for this evening, um, I'm very uh, uh, sad to tell everyone that uh, for those who knew her, uh, Connie Seidel uh, passed away. Um, it was a few days ago, and, um, and this was after a, I would say, a very very long and courageous uh, battle with cancer. Uh, she was finally taken from us. A, uh, just, a, uh, just a stellar and dynamic, dynamic woman um, taken from us too soon. And uh, we'll, be celebrating, um, we'll be celebrating her life on, uh, on Thursday. There'll be a service here at the church with a visitation at... Um, at 11 o'clock and a service at uh, 1 o'clock. And um, we'll be continuing to remind everyone of uh, details um, as we go. But just to, uh, for all of you to, uh, to lift up um, in your prayers uh, Connie's family, uh, specifically um, uh, her husband Steve and daughter Elizabeth, um, as they... Um, as they as they find a way to say goodbye, and it is going to be difficult uh, for us to um, here here at the church. And uh, I know it's I know that it is that it is difficult for me. But here at uh, at First English, we continue to be a church on the go. We are a church on the move. Um, we are preparing so many different uh, missions and ministries here. We have Valley Day coming up very soon all the kinds of things to get, to get excited about. So it is so important that we should continue to celebrate our ministry here um, at First English and all of, all of the good work uh, that we do for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please stand as you are able as we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we look the other way. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves. And free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. Our reading is from Genesis chapter 32. Jacob wrestles with God. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that, that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. And now I invite you to stand as you are able. 
as we celebrate together the Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything you, gave, you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one dis destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but, to, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify them, so that they may al so they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you all to be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue our journey through Genesis, we have experienced many, many kinds of families. That has, been, that has been the theme of all of our readings of family, a family dynamic, of complicated families, even to be alienated from one's own family in order to find themselves and their own covenant with God. And so much of that has had to do with Jacob and the incredibly complicated life of Jacob. And in that complicated life, to know that he was God's chosen. That God chose him, despite his flaws, despite his faults, to one day be the father of Israel. And more than that, to be Israel. And I will explain. Our reading for today is when Jacob, alone in the wilderness again, he sends his family ahead of him and he wrestles with God. He wrestles. And there is so much meaning to this, so much behind it, so much that we can only interpret with our own hearts. So I will give you what has been on my heart as I have been preparing for this message. Now, believe it or not, I actually, I was, I was an athlete in school, or at least I tried my hand at being 
at being an athlete. Um, I think the only one out there that I was ever good at was, uh, was football. And it's not really because I understood the sport or really even understood the playbook. I think my, my dyslexia was such I really didn't understand um, how the rules worked. But I was really fast. So they set me up as what, you know, a defensive end because I was really good at sacking the quarterback. And I love that feeling of just running up and just seeing the quarterback with a look on his face of, it was great. But, you know, I, tr I tried for a few years. Heart really wasn't in it. And I also, as I was trying to make hands different sports, I did try. I tried wrestling. I tried, I tried wrestling for one season, which I did find I was pretty, I was, I was pretty good at. And, um, you know, this isn't, I'm not talking about, this isn't, un unfortunately, you know, not pro wrestling with all of, uh, with all of the theatrics and, and the jumping around or even, or that uh, Mexican luchador stuff with the mask, that would have been fun. But actually something much harder. I mean, what you see with this competitive wrestling, which requires this actually grappling, grappling with your opponent, who is very much... As, as physically matched to me as I am to my opponent. It is incredibly, incredibly taxing, this kind of, this kind of, of wrestling. I would I describe it as when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object to find two people who are perfectly physically matched trying trying to pin the other. It, it, was, it, was, it was very difficult. And um, I only tried, it was only for the one, for the one, the one season, and it was, um, I learned a lot. You know, I learned, I learned a lot about myself with this. I mean, what I also learned was that I think in my life, I'm more than anything else, just, you know, much more, you know, I would say, creatively inclined. You know, I was, I was the artist. You know, I, I, was the, I was the artist, I was the musician, I was the one who, you know, couldn't be found anywhere without, without a sketchbook. That kind of, that kind of artist. But those thoughts of, um, just of wrestling, I mean, stayed with me, of how, of how incredibly just um, difficult and taxing it is and how impressive it is for anyone for just for any anyone who can do it. And as I was thinking about wrestling and and Jacob, as Jacob was wrestling, very much this mysterious stranger that of all of the wrestling that we actually do in our own lives every single day. And it's not just about grappling physically with another opponent. We wrestle with all kinds of moments throughout, throughout our lives. We, we, we have moments where we are wrestling back and forth with our family members. There are those who, uh, there are those who wrestle with their mental health. There are those who wrestle with, with addiction. There are those who, who wrestle with their finances. There are those who just wrestle to get through their day to day. There is so much wrestling that occurs that occurs in our lives. So even to read about Jacob in this moment when he wrestled all night with this mysterious stranger, there is so much more to it than a simple match of strength. It's a match of, of, what, of spirituality, of emotions. There's so much more, so much more happening. That as we heard in our story from Genesis 32, it's Genesis that uh, in this that Jacob was um, he he sent his family on. They were traveling, and he stayed the night. And in the night, a uh, a stranger came to him in the night. And it's thought to be perhaps this was an angel that perhaps this could have been God himself coming to, 
to wrestle with, with Jacob all, all night long. And the wrestling, this wrestling match was the one where they were so perfectly matched. No one was winning. No one was winning. No one was losing. They were just, they were, they were, they were stuck in that single moment of wrestling back and forth. And then it finally, then it finally ended where it was the, the person that, that, that Jacob was wrestling said like, uh, wanted, wanted, it was time to end it. You know, the sun, it's like the sun was rising and Jacob says, no, I will not, I will not let go until, until you bless me. And when that blessing itself is the most magnificent blessing that Jacob could possibly receive, which is where it truly seems like Jacob was wrestling with God, it was because there in that moment, God changed Jacob's name. He said, you are now Israel. Your name is now Israel because you have struggled. You have wrestled with God and with humanity. And the changing of names is so incredibly important for anyone in our scripture. It, it means a turning point. This was truly, this was truly Jacob receiving the covenant from from God. This was, this was the peak. This was the summit. This was the place where all of it was, was headed. This moment where Jacob wrestled. Where Jacob wrestled with God, with that mysterious, mysterious stranger. And when it ended, his name was changed. And Jacob was changed. Now, what one might ask is, what was all this for? Why did Jacob have to do this? Even to ask who Jacob was, was wrestling. And very often when one reads this, is that Jacob was truly, Jacob was wrestling Wrestling with, with God. And we say that, you know, you read, read it closely. Like, you say that when God wrestles, God, God plays dirty. I mean, he like, he put out, he, he put out Jacob's uh, hip socket while they were doing this. But Jacob continued to prevail. But more than all of this, what I believe is that Jacob was not only wrestling with God as this equally matched opponent. Jacob was wrestling with Jacob. Jacob was wrestling with himself. This was that moment, that final moment, when he had to work through everything that he had gone through before, and he had to wrestle with himself to finally achieve that covenant with God. Where he was wrestling with God, he was also wrestling with himself. And this was more than just, this was more than just any kind of physical, physical battle. This was spiritual. This was a spiritual battle that he was having with himself to ready and to prepare himself, wrestling with himself. And in the readings we heard today, we heard something, I would say, interestingly similar when the Gospel of John. And this is, in fact, where Jesus wrestles too, and in a very similar way. That in this, in this passage, this is right before that G Jesus is preparing himself for the moment that he is going to be, he is going to be betrayed 
and crucified and die. And he is in the dark of night in the garden and he is praying alone. And he is praying to his God in heaven and he is praying on behalf of his disciples. Take care of them. Jesus is saying to God, I've, I've held them close, but they're in, they're still, like, they're still right here. They are vulnerable. When I leave them, I need you to protect them. He even uses, even uses those words, protect them. And as Jesus is praying on behalf of his disciples, this does feel like its own form of wrestling. That he is now wrestling with God. He is pleading with God to take care of his disciples. These disciples, these friends of his. Take care of them. And he is lifting them, lifting them up. He is wrestling with God. And at the same time, because as it says in our scripture, between Jesus and the Father, says the Father and I are one. Jesus is also wrestling with himself. He is wrestling with his own understanding of what's going to happen next. He is wrestling with himself that the fact that he is going to leave these disciples behind and they are going to be left alone he is, wrestling, he is wrestling with the Father. He is wrestling with himself. He even, he even brings forth and calls forth the Holy Spirit. All of them. Preparing for what is going, for what is going to happen next. And What's interesting to me with all of this, as, as Jesus wrestles with God, he wrestles with his fate that he knows is coming, the cross that he knows is coming, as he wrestles with all of that. It is made clear that in this wrestling match, the only way to win is to lose. It's the meaning behind the cross. As Jesus wrestled with his own fate, the only way to win would be to lose. To give up everything. God lost everything so that we could win. So that we could, could be saved. Even in, you know, even that, that, that giving up and allowing and allowing the other to win. The, the, the same thing happens as, as uh, God is wrestling with Jacob in, in the dark of night. God let Jacob win. God let Jacob win so that covenant could be established. In all these cases, it is God who makes the decision to lose, to lose so that we, so we can be saved. Now we truly do wrestle with so many things in our lives. So many things that are so deeply, that are so deeply personal. So many things that are, yeah, they're impossible to explain to others. And so often as, as we wrestle, it's most often with ourselves. It's not with the others around us. It's with our own struggles. It's with our own conflicts. That is where the wrestling truly occurs. Let's say for all, for all human beings, just wrestling to, to be a 
better person today. And I, I think this is my, I feel like this is something I, I wrestle with. To be a better person today than I was yesterday. And to wrestle with that. And also to know that as I am wrestling, God fights alongside me. That God is with me. Wrestling with me. And in the end, it is our God who loses. So that I, so that we, can persevere so that we can win, so we can live to fight another day. Like with, like with Jacob, whose journey will continue and continue as finally he understands, comes to understand his covenant, covenant with God. Like with like with the desolation of the cross. And with that loss comes the resurrection of all humanity and the power and the empowerment that will come to the disciples as they can spread, spread that word. With that wrestling, all of us receive the covenant of God. As we continue to struggle, as we continue to wrestle, God stays with us so that all can be changed, can be reborn, can be redeemed. So may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds with Jesus, the Christ of God. We continue our worship now as we sing together what a friend we have in Jesus and I invite you to stay seated.
Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and for all of creation. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork displaying your creative impulse. Guard and keep this world safe for all creatures, great and small. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Gracious Sovereign, guide us to lead your church with strength and compassion. Help us to be a community where all are made welcomed as you make us your perfect children chosen children of God. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, and rejected. Grant healing and love to all who are in need. We pray especially for Pastor Marty and Lola Rugi, for Jody Porter, Connie, Connie Seidel, Brittany Ratchman, David Malky, Deb Jefferson, Roger Suda, Shelby Lloyd, Sue Wellenstein, Paul Dietrich, Wanda White, Dolores Johnson, Jerry Schmidt, and Alexis Fox. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saving God, through the witness of those who have died, Strengthen us now with this gift of life. We pray, especially on this day, for Connie Seidel and for her family. We cherish her memory, the gift of eternal life, and the feast that has no end. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Jesus Christ, we raise our prayers to you, loving God, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Reach out to one another and share the peace of Christ. I invite you to stand once more as we pray together our offertory prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it always, so that you may remember me. I now invite you to hold hands as you are able, as we pray together the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Receive tonight's blessing. The God of peace, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We conclude our worship now as we sing together. Praise the Lord, the Almighty. the stranger. Thanks be to God. We will. Have a great weekend. <laughs>